The next type of factoring we're going to explore here is called factoring by grouping and that's usually a technique you use when there's more than three terms in the algebraic expression. For example, we end up with something like this. Uh, it may be factorable, it's not always possible, but if it is, you may be able to factor that by grouping. And to illustrate how that works, let me first show you these first two examples right here. If you look at the first example here, you notice that there's only two terms. It may not be immediately obvious, but notice that the x is multiplied by the y minus 3, so that forms one term. The 5 is multiplied by the y minus 3, that forms a second term, and they're separated by a, a positive sign, a plus sign. Is there something common between this term and this term? And if you look at it carefully, you say, oh yes, I can see that. They both have a y minus 3 within the parentheses, and those are factors because they're multiplied times the item that's in front of it by the factor that's in front of it. In this case, it's multiplied times an x, and here it's multiplied times a 5, which means I can factor out what's common between the two terms, which is a y minus 3. So I can write this as y minus 3, and then multiply by what's left. If I divide this by y minus 3, I have an x left, and if I divide this by y minus 3, I have a 5 left. And so the factored form of this initial algebraic expression is y minus 3 times x plus 5. Same over there, if I look at my second example, you can see that there's one term right there, plus there's another term, they're separated by a plus sign. And the reason why I know that's a term, because it, this is multiplied together, not added or subtracted, and this is multiplied together, not added or subtracted, so that makes that a single term. Is there something common between this and this? And the answer is yes, this has an x minus 4, and that has an x minus 4, which means I can factor that out. And so I can write this as x minus 4 times, if I divide this by an x minus 4, I'm left with simply an x plus 3. And uh, if I factor um, x minus 4 out of here, I'm left with an x plus 7 there. So that's an x plus 3 plus an x plus 7. Okay, I kept the parentheses on there so you can see that all I did here was remove an x minus 4, or not just remove, but factor out an x minus 4, and I factor an x minus 4 there. If I multiply this back in, x minus 4 times x plus 3, I end up with this. If I multiply x minus 4 times x plus 7, I end up with this. And now all I have to do is what's inside the brackets is simply add what I can add. I have an x plus an x, that becomes a 2x, a 3 plus 7 becomes a 10, so I can write this as x minus 4 times 2x plus 10. Simply adding the x's together and adding the 3 plus 7 together. So that's the factored form of this original now expression. we know how to find common factors in algebraic expressions that look like this, we're now ready to attack the next type of factoring called factoring by grouping. And the reason why they call it factoring by grouping is that if you end up with an algebraic expression like this that has like more than three terms, in this case four terms, you're able to group several of those terms together. So in other words, you can say I'm going to group the first two terms together and the next two terms together. And then you're going to only look among those two and see if something is common. Because whatever may be common among those two and among those two may not be common among all four. Looking at the first two, I can clearly see that they both have an x in them and I can actually factor out an x squared. So I can write this as x squared times, and of course x cubed divided by x squared is simply x, and x squared divided by x squared is simply a 1, so this becomes x squared times x minus 1. I do the same with the second group. I look and see what's common, and here I can see that both of them have the number 3 that's common in each term, so I can factor out a 3, and I'm left with an x minus 1, because 3x divided by 3 is x, minus 3 divided by 3 is a minus 1. And now I can see that here I have a term, and there I have a term, and I'm going to make myself a little bit more room by moving this problem down a little bit. So let me rewrite this problem here. There's an x4 minus x cubed plus x squared plus x, and erase that, give myself a little bit more room. There we go. Now, notice I have two terms left. Each of the two terms has a common factor x minus 1 and x minus 1, just like what I saw up there. 
and I can then go ahead and factor out the x minus 1 out of each, x minus 1, and then I'm left with, over here I'm just left an x squared, and over there I'm just left with a 3, so that's plus 3, and there I have the factored form of my original equation. And for a moment there I go, wow, that looks kind of strange, but hey, that's the answer. Again, notice very carefully that out of this term, x minus 1 is common. Out of this term, x minus 1 is common. I'm left with an x squared. I'm left with a plus 3, and that's what I got. Now, if I want to make sure I did it correctly, you can multiply this back out and see if you end up with the same terms that you had initially. All right, looking at the next problem, I'm going to do the same thing. I have four terms. I'm going to group these two together, group those two together, and then look for common factors. In the first case, I see that an a squared is common, so I can write this as a squared times have an a minus 1 left. Notice that a cubed divided by a squared is a, a squared divided by a squared is 1, and don't forget the minus sign. Okay, on the next group here, the group of 2, I can see that the number 2 is common, so I can factor out the 2, and I'm left with an a minus 1. Again, if I multiply the 2 times a, I get 2a. The 2 times the minus 1 gives me minus 2. Always a quick check to make sure you did it correctly is a good thing to do. The next thing, you realize that, ah, I have a term here. I have a second term there. They both have the a minus 1 as a common factor. I can factor that out. a minus 1. And then I'm left with an a squared from the left term and a plus 2 from the right term. And there's my factored form of my original problem. The next example, the one I just moved down a little bit, give myself a little bit more room. Notice I have an x to the fourth, x cubed, minus, uh, plus x squared plus x. And again, I'm going to group those together. Now, what you could do, you could say, well, if they each have an x in them, I could already factor out an x. Well, let's, let's do that. So factor out an x. When I do that, I have an x cubed minus an x squared plus an x plus 1 left. Now, with those four terms, I'm going to apply the same technique as I did there. I'm going to group them together in two groups of two and notice to see if there's anything that's common. In the first group, I have an x squared that's common, so I can factor that out. So this is equal to x times x squared times, and this gives me an x minus 1. And over there, I have an x plus 1. There's nothing that's common there, so I can simply write this as an x plus 1. And unfortunately, in this case, here I have an x minus 1, they have an x plus 1, they're not common, I cannot factor them out, so I have now written this in its final factored form. Looking at my last example here, again I have four terms, I'm going to group them in groups of two, so I take the first two plus the last two, I'm going to look for common factors in each of those two groups. In the case of the first two, I notice that the 2 is a common factor and x squared is a common factor. So I can write this as 2x squared times, and x to the 4 divided by x squared is x squared, and 6 divided by 2 is 3, and x squared divided by x squared is 1. So this simply, oop, I'm not done yet. Oh yes, I'm done right there. So I now factor out a 2x squared out of the first two terms. Looking at the next two terms, I have the number 5 that looks like it's common, so I can write this as plus 5 times x plus 3. Again, a quick check shows me that if I multiply 5 times x, I get 5x, so 5 times 3, I get 15, so I did it correctly. And unfortunately, here again, I was hoping that this would be an x plus 3 and an x plus 3 I could factor out, but since they're not common, that is the final form of this particular expression. Okay, so now you have seen how you can factor algebraic expression using the technique of factoring by grouping.